Welcome to Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Gary LaRue. In this episode, we're going to cover the July software and design issue. We put together a cover feature about how artificial intelligence and machine learning are adding new capabilities to traditional RF EDA tools with contributions from Altair, Ansys, Cadence AWR, Keysight, and MathWorks. The contributions show how AI and machine learning are being used to optimize antenna designs, capacitor placement, radar design, and 5G phased arrays. So check it out. What do we have for technical features, Gary? We have several technical features in the issue from Copper Mountain Technologies, a contributed application note on RLC parameter extraction using the transfer matrix. And we wrap up the three-part series explaining the development of a MEM switch with metamaterial contacts written by Synergy Microwave and the Indian Institute of Technology. And then our fabs and labs this month visits DB Control, a manufacturer of high power TWT amplifiers, microwave power modules, and high voltage power supplies for defense applications. So we had a special guest join us remotely today. Steve Ellis, Senior Product Line Manager for Interconnects at Pasternak, joined us to discuss the importance of RF interconnects and what many engineers overlook in this area. Let's take a look at a clip from that now. So given the large variety, how do you decide what interconnect is best for a design? One of the things you should do is take into consideration all of the requirements of the product, including the electrical, the mechanical, and environmental uh, conditions that the product will be used in. So many times, uh, the main driver of the connector interface for the coax or the coax itself is the frequency of use, the frequency that, of the information that is going to be transported over the coax cable. So many connectors and cables are designed for, to be very robust and mechanically strong or to have very low loss. And in those conditions, you may have a very large, very heavy, very robust connector that has a threaded interface. Those cables may not be appropriate for high frequency needs because the higher the frequency, the smaller the cable needs to be to be able to support that carrier. Also, likewise, mechanically, as I mentioned, you may have a threaded connection, but you may prefer like a snap-on or a bayonet connection like a BNC, or a simple push-on connection, because you may want to reduce installation time or many other considerations. And those same products would not be usable in an aircraft, per se, because of vibration environment. So the mechanical environment is also very important. And then the environmental conditions, it may be uh, very extreme temperatures, there may be water exposure, there's other environmental conditions that you need to consider as well. Steve always offers very practical advice, so love having him on the show. Turning to the news, Soytech announced a business agreement with Qualcomm to supply piezo on insulator engineered substrates for 4G and 5G filters. We had an article on this game-changing technology last October, and Qualcomm is using it to produce their ultrasol filters that we announced in February. The combination of the Soytech POI substrates and the Qualcomm's filter design expertise enables these filters to have lower loss, wider bandwidths, higher operating frequency, steeper skirts, and better performance over temperature compared to traditional saw and ball filters. The process also enables a significant size reduction since multiple filter functions can be integrated on one die. Keeping an eye on the progress of 5G, the standards body 3GPP signed off on the COVID-19 delayed release of the latest 5G NR specifications, release 16, but they also warned that the next standards were at risk of further holdups. Release 16 was finalized on July 3rd, and they shifted the timeline for release 17 to December 2021. If you want more details about what was in release 16, check out our blog posting by Qualcomm, which outlines these details is hosted on our homepage right now. On the 5G product side, the GSA 5G Ecosystem July 2020 report announced that 5G devices have continued to climb, 
With the number announced of 5G devices by the end of June, 317, of which 135 were understood to be commercially available. So progress is still being made despite the COVID-19 situation. So Gary, what did you see in the news? I have a couple international items. First of all, Hensoldt was awarded a one and a half billion euro contract to develop and produce a new active phased array radar for the German and Spanish Eurofighter fleets. The contract, which is from Airbus, will equip some 130 aircraft with the radar. And then an interesting alliance by the UK government and Barty, which is the world's third largest cellular operator, Jointly, they bid $1 billion to rescue OneWeb from bankruptcy. You probably recall that OneWeb was one of the early ventures proposing to launch a constellation of low Earth orbit satellites to provide broadband internet access to underserved regions of the globe. Well, they had launched 74 of their proposed 648 satellite constellation, and they were on the path to raise capital to launch the remaining satellites and start service when the coronavirus pandemic wiped out the financial markets, forcing them to file for bankruptcy. So this new deal, which looks good, must be approved by creditors, the court, and regulators. All that's expected to happen during the fourth quarter of this year. So Gary and I started a new podcast series on IoT innovations, and we had our first recording session with Grow Guru, who is improving farming operations with its IoT soil sensors. So look for that to publish soon. As we mentioned last time, don't miss our podcast series with Roden Schwartz on current topics in 5G technology with their market expert, Andreas Rassler. All these episodes are available for download at our podcast site, podcast.microwavejournal.com. So check those out. And I have a couple items related to events. As you know, IMS was to be in LA at the end of June. However, because of the coronavirus, It is transformed into an online event, which will be live streamed from August 4th through 6th, keeping all the keynotes and the technical sessions and also a virtual exhibition. You can get more information about the event and register at ims-ieee.org. And if you're a member of the Microwave Theory and Technique Society, registration is free. Also, our second annual EDICon online conference is just a few months away, scheduled for every Tuesday in October, and we have a different technical focus each week, starting with 5G, IoT, and automotive, moving to PCB, interconnect design, then signal and power integrity, and wrapping up with radar and antennas. EDICon online is free to attend, and it is IEEE approved for continuing education units. You can get more information about the technical program and register at edicononline.com. Well, that wraps up this episode of Frequency Matters. We want to thank our sponsor, Pasternak, a global supplier of RF microwave components, supported by 19 international distributors serving customers in more than 35 countries. Thank you for joining us. Hope your summer is going well, and please stay safe.